We've got gun battles. We've got fire burns. We've got a big car crash. It's getting dirty. It's really exciting. And the scope of the movie is much, much bigger than we've ever done before. We're really lucky on this film because we have some amazing actors that are all willing to do their own action. One of my favorites is this stairwell fight that we have with uh, Elan. I like being intense, so for me to be able to get in there and get my heart beating, getting those adrenaline glands going, that's been cool. Oh, Jesus. That's a hand cannon. Let me see that. This is my first time shooting a gun and having to fire at someone was crazy. This is my first time being able to do this much action. The fans always say, we want more purging, so we definitely deliver on this movie more than we have ever before. I play Nia Charms, and she is an activist for her community. And I like to think of her as a warrior princess. Dimitri is an unlikely hero because he's a drug dealer. I think the biggest part of this process for me was sort of justifying how he could care about the community so much, but at the same time, I mean, he's a drug dealer, you know? So it's a tough contradiction to play. We got a lot of talking to do after all this is done, huh? Isaiah is an adolescent boy who's stepping into manhood, and within this journey of the film, he goes literally from a boy to a man. Skeletor is so scary. I just saw him for the first time. He is the most terrifying person. Gerard has honestly, he's been a blessing in terms of allowing me to make the character all I thought it could be. What we see on Skeletor, you know, the scarification. I had specific tattoos that I wanted, and I hope they will impact audiences. You see me, NFFA? He's just evil for evil's sake. Then there's me, the comic relief. Oh, but it gets better, because I shit on myself a little bit when I was on my way home. My fucking bowels done joined the purge, too. Like, I'm bloody. Like, <laughs> there's murders happening, and how do I do this? <laughs> how do I make the moments lighter? The director, he gave me freedom to, to help develop her and to make her fully Dolores. <sighs> and they's like, oh, man. Don't ask me how I know. The purge is also known for his mask. The teeth mask is creepy and freaky looking. <laughs> I think the most interesting part about this installment of The Purge is that there's a lot of political statements going on with masks. The ones that I've seen that have shifted me on the inside were the ones that had like historical context, like their blackface masks. Those are really unsettling to see. For everyone, it's the purge. Interesting term. The purge, sadly, is more relevant than ever before, and I think that has a lot to do with what's going on in the country. And I think the purge touches a nerve as a result of that. As a filmmaker of color, I really wanted to address the political issues head on. I think what makes the Purge saga scary is the fact that it hits close to home. Like, it's not even the killing that makes it scary. It's just the idea that this could be America one day. The prequel allows us to really dive into the reasons and the reaction of the people to the Purge. They have monetized and incentivized murder. It has escalated quickly, especially in Park Hill and Mariners Harbor, the low-income, high-crime areas of Staten Island. We are in the last few hours of this night, and people are participating. The NFFA was correct. God's sake, girl. And Bob, you might as well turn up or whatever y'all say. <laughs> what the hell is going on now? Yeah, 
well and bad now. I play Naya Charms, and the she is an activist for her community. She is very strong, and I like to think of her as a warrior princess. Um, and she is at a, a point in life where it is hard. You know, the, nothing has come easy for her ever. She had to work for everything that she has or doesn't have, um, and she is powerful in the sense that she's, she does not like the idea of giving up or doesn't like the idea of there not being an answer. The community is participating in the purge because there is monetary gain. That is it. Um, everyone is struggling. Everyone is trying to make ends meet. And finally, in a way, their prayers have been answered with the amount of money that's being offered if they get through this one night. And on the grand scheme of things, it sounds pretty easy. Okay, I get through this one night. Cool, I gain this amount of money. So I'm just fundamentally, it's, it's because of the money. Naya is outraged by the idea of the purge. Um, she is looking at it as a bigger picture, bigger than the money. Um, she understands what this means for her culture even more than just the community. It's, it's way bigger than, um, than this little project, this little experiment. And she's trying to convince people to wake up and realize what they're doing to us. Isaiah is Naya's younger brother. Um, not younger by a lot of years, but a few. And he's just, he's like her baby. Whether he knows it or not, she knows that that is like her baby. Um, and he has so much potential. And Naya is working so hard to put him through this good school and just to set him above the influence of what our surroundings would give him and just try not to make him a product of the environment. Dimitri is a kingpin. He's, he's the guy in charge of handling all the corners, handling all um, their, their stash, the, what's coming into the town, what's coming out of town, all the transactions, the bigger, the bigger transactions. He isn't the one who stands on the corner himself, rather he's the boss of everyone else. So people know not to mess with him. I really enjoy working with Gerard. He never lets us forget um, the realistic component of being in a culture like the black culture and minority culture and, and bringing that to the reality of, of the Purge saga and how, and how the culture would react or not react to certain situations. So it's cool to see um, his perspective on, on a night like this. The neighborhood the film takes place is in the area called Park Hill in Staten Island. Setting this film in Park Hill felt personal to me because I relate to the people, the community, their struggles, um, what they were fighting for, what they believed in, and, and, and I saw myself in these people. It's a prequel. It takes place before one, two, and three, so this takes us back to the beginning, how it all started. Um, with, the government, with the government implementing um, the idea of the purge and we get to see how it all began. I've always been a fan of the horror genre. Uh, I've been in love with it since I was a kid. I love being scared. I love the tension. I love the, the uh, you know, just to uh, actually sitting in a movie theater with a bunch of people and being scared of a boogeyman or a monster or something out of this world. He's really concerned about this purge night. He doesn't know what's going to happen. It's the first time hearing about this. And he's really concerned, and he has to figure out what he's going to do during, during this night. Is he going to protect his stash? Is he going to protect his family? Is he going to go out and participate? And we get, we get, we get, we get the chance to see Demetria really um, do something special. Naya, she's a leader, she's a community activist, and she's against the purge. She feels the purge is, is going to hurt our community, and she wants to protect her brother, and anybody she knows from, from this whole experiment.
Well, the purge is happening tonight. The first purge, um, which is a 12 hour event in which everyone gets to sort of unleash and do whatever they want to do with no consequences, which is pretty hideous, honestly. Um, but that's what's going down. And imagine like trying to protect your family from something like that. Reading this script, what I felt was that there is this inherent misconception about ethnic people being prone to violence. And so the experiment is trying to sort of, you know, prove this theory. Is this true? How do we incentivize? How do we monetize um, this experiment and get everyone to join in so that we can prove our theory and um, act accordingly? So that in and of itself is really intense and terrifying. I guess, you know, the idea that, what would you do? Like, would you be a purger? Or would you be a person who stays to witness the purge? Or would you kind of feel like, it almost, it's like a, this um, bird's eye view of, of what we really are, our primal selves, you know? And like, where do you fall in that spectrum? Are you somebody who has this latent desire to, you know, exact revenge or to see what it feels like to hurt someone or, you know, are you a person who gets off on watching it? I think it's a fascinating experiment for some people to see or to come to a better understanding of who they are. There is um, Naya's brother and he's a character who is He's kind of, he's, he's an adolescent boy who's, you know, stepping into manhood. And within this journey of the film, he goes literally from a boy to a man. And you, you're able to see him really understand what, it, well, what he thinks it means to be a man. And he has his trials and tri tribulations in which kind of get him to that place. So he's, he's yeah, he's, he's got a really strong arc within the film. Kind of like the, the character in which your, your everyday young person will relate to and, and gives you the real experience of what it's like to be in the perch. The relationship between Isaiah and Nye is is beautiful. It's it's really sweet. It's really it's a it's a brother sister and both parent relationship. And I feel like both of them at their own times and opportunities get to be that for each other. Um, you know, Nye is constantly trying to look after Isaiah, and make sure that he's on the right track and stays on board because she wants the best for him. With this, with the island experiment, it genuinely feels like give us a year and a half, two years, those types of conversations might start to happen. And that's what makes it so, so scary, but also exciting because it's like, this is, this is actually crazy. This is very relatable. This is people sitting down watching this film are genuinely gonna feel like when they walk out of the cinema, whoa, like the scary thing about this is that we don't know what could happen. This could very well happen in our own backyard. The block party, the, the purge party as we call it is, I feel like that is, you know, one of the realest moments in the film in terms of if you was to have a genuine purge in Staten Island, it feels like that's what the people would do. You know, people that don't want to kill anyone, they're, but they're kind of taking advantage of what this is. And, you know, it's, it's genuinely a block party. It's a carnival on the street. And it's like, OK, if we're not going to participate in this thing, let's make the most of it that we can and let's, let's party. Let's do what we usually do. You know, let's have a good time. And the purge party is, I feel like, is a big representation of the, the sanity within the community and, you know, like them trying to almost escape what's actually happening. Let's take our attention away from what's happening. Let's have a party. Let's, let's do what makes us feel normal because we're trying to escape from the reality of this thing, which is any one of us at any moment can die. I play Dolores, and if I can say it, she's like a lovable badass. <laughs> she's the lady in the building who knows everything and everybody. I think it just makes people think, you know, what would I do in that situation? Imagine if it really happened. It makes you question your morals and, you know, make decisions. Like, if I really had to choose between them or me, what would I do? Yeah, so I think people are interested in that, especially now. It's like you really question what type of human being you are with all that's going on now. Like, what do you really feel? Would I really not kill someone? How do I know? If I was in this situation, hmm. The bad guys hide behind things, you know? So it, it, it speaks to that. Who you really are is, is covered up by a mask, you know? And it could be anybody underneath the mask. It could be your boss, your neighbor, your so-called friend, your coworker. We're taking it up 100 
110. We're turning up the volume all the way and you've never seen this before. You've seen purges maybe before, but this is totally different and new. The chief has a huge stake in this night. The chief was the one who found the experiment, who decided that it would be a great idea for the country and worked tirelessly to get it through Congress and convince people that this was a valid idea and something that people would actually want to participate in. So it's very important for him that it's a huge success. The architect is a brilliant behavioral scientist, played by the equally brilliant Marissa Tomei. I was so, so excited when I heard that she was going to be doing the movie. And uh, she's an actress that I've admired for a long time. And, um, and I've met, I think, one or two times. And I thought she was an incredible person as well. So, and, and it's been everything I could have hoped for more. It's the kind of thing that people find intriguing. It's a really intriguing premise so that you can look at it through a bunch of different uh, perspectives. And so I think that's part of it. And I think with this particular one, I think there's there will be, you know, hopefully some interest in it from the standpoint that we're going back and seeing how the whole thing got started in the first place. You have some disenfranchised individuals who don't have much and you say, all right, you participate in this trial, we'll give you thousands of dollars. You know, for some, that may not be a lot of money, but when you look at where they placed it, not only just the fact that it's Staten Island, but like the projects, Park Hill, Staten Island, is brilliant. You know, it, it, it's twistedly brilliant to say, all right, well, if this is gonna work, this gives it the best chance to work. You know, with people who are looking for a leg up, looking for a way out. And that might be the ability for them to move or to change their circumstance. So yeah, they may have to survive this horrible thing, but what it does, or what it has the potential to do, is enormous. The contexts are interesting because you get to personalize uh, the Purge Night in, in, in a really dynamic way. Uh, you get to record everything that you've, you're seeing throughout the night. And for someone uh, like Skeletor, it's, it's a great opportunity to once again be seen. You know, a lot of uh, what we do we kind of want recognition for. And if I'm gonna be out there purging, I, I want you to know. This is, I think, completely different. <laughs> I think because it's the prequel, we also have license to create something brand new. And because everything hasn't been set up, we're setting up the franchise in a roundabout way. You know, and I, that concept to me was so exciting. Dimitri, Dimitri Simber, he's a natural born leader. Um, someone, he's a mixed bag to be completely honest. Uh, I think the biggest part of this process for me was sort of justifying how he could care about the community so much, but at the same time play a role in, um, I mean, he's a drug dealer, you know, so it's a, it's a tough thing. It's a, it's, just, it's a tough contradiction to, to, to play, but I think there are people in the real world who, you know, are just like this guy. When we see the purge that came out in 2013, the first literal purge that came out, uh, we see that, you know, crime is at an all time low and whatnot. So we get to go inside with this one and see how that came about. So we get to see the people who, who were responsible for creating the experiment, what their intentions were, but then also, and that much more tragically, we get to experience what it was um, for the victims of this experimentation. Naya is Dimitri's only peer in this movie. Um, Dimitri is the king of the jungle, right? But Naya, he has a lot of history with her, so there's a level of familiarity. It doesn't go much into the script, but I will believe I believe her to have been his first love somebody who he really cared about, somebody who just knew him in a way that was a lot less guarded than he is forced to be being in his line of work these days. It doesn't sugarcoat because it gets right to the, to the root of what many people to be, believe the purge to actually be about. And um, 
it just it just kind of says, hey, here's here's something to consider. It definitely does push the boundaries. Yeah. That's why you should go see it. This is the fourth Purge movie, and um, the Purge, sadly, is more relevant than ever, ever before, and I think that has a lot to do with what's going on in the world somewhat, but more specifically in the country. The Founding Fathers are very, very good marketers, so they marketed this notion that purging is good for you, and purging is going to help society, whether you're rich or poor, and it's a good thing, and it's going to be fun. And so a lot of people bought into that message, which is, uh, which, is, which is a sad reflection on society, but also it shows how powerful leadership can sell an idea, which is really bad. I think one of the fun things with The Purge is that it's gotten more political. So I think uh, the, the concept really lends itself to being, um, to being political and, and stirring up people's emotions around current issues out there in the world. I saw a movie called Burning Sands, which Gerard did, and I loved, and um, I sent it to James and Sebastian, who are our partners on all the Purge movies, and they liked it, and then we all sat and met with Gerard and were impressed with his vision for the movie, and we got together and did it, and he really did a terrific job, particularly with the actors, but, but he did a great job all the way through, and, um, and, uh, and I think he's going on to do, to do much more, so we had a great relationship with him. We wanted to explore the idea of the experiment. And this is why it's on Staten Island, which is an island, to contain it. We love the idea of the bridges being cut off and the whole experiment starts and everybody looks at Staten Island and sees what's going to unfold. So it comes with a question mark, like what is this going to bring? It is also for us the opportunity to really explore the reaction to the concept. Because in the other, in the other movies, it's already established, so there's less discussion, but what is it? And here is like the audience, like the, the, the people living in Staten Island, our, our, our characters, they wonder, what is The Purge? It's uh, based on a, a character called The Architect, who is a psychologist, and who has analyzed uh, human behavior over the last thousands of years, and said that humans are inherently violent. Uh, and that instead of fighting it, it might be easier to go with it and to allow people to express their inherent violence for 24 hours and then contain it for the rest of the year. Scary movies show things that we're afraid of and we like watching it, but we don't want it to happen. You have re people fighting back against all these terrible ideas that we see, uh, the white supremacists be being allowed to speak out everywhere. And our movie is just a, a, f a fight back kind of statement to say we, we don't want that. That's not the America that we want, that's not the America that we love. Uh, we, we love a, a, an America where there's strong communal ties, where people stand up for each other. I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be scary. And I also think it's just gonna be a catharsis. It's just gonna be a relief because all the things that I think a lot of people hate in the world we live in right now, we fight in the movie and I think that you're just going to feel better after seeing it. That's really my hope. Keeping on the movie theme, I've got a behind-the-scenes interesting fact for you from the movie So. While shooting So, both Carrie Alves and Lee Wanell were told that a puppet was being used in a scene when actually a real actor was to be used. In order to keep the secret from them, all the scenes in the bathroom needed to be shot in one day, with them being authentically chained. And Tobin Bell, who the two actors were told was a puppet, lying face down and motionless throughout the filming. It took 15 hours, but the effort paid off. The shock on Elwes and Warner's faces when Tobin stood up was genuine. Now, if you haven't already done it, Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to always receive the latest trailers the moment they are online. See you next time.